So this is a printout of the schedule I emailed you. Um, and I'm just going to talk through it a little bit because everyone seems to have a lot of questions about, well, how much does the puppy sleep? What should I do about naps? Should I put them in the crate? What about eating? So I'm going to kind of go over all of those things right now. Um, I've broken this up into morning, afternoon, and evening. Um, these are the times, like the eating times, um, which I consider a puppy's day to kind of revolve around. The reason being is that um, eating drives going to the bathroom. But anyway, those times that I put here are similar, very close to what we've been doing with your puppy for the entire last week that your puppy was at our house. So I've got a 7 a.m. wake up. I'll get back to that in a minute. And the 7 to 7.30 eat time. Anytime a puppy eats, they're going to have to go to the bathroom after. So that's kind of the pattern I've followed here. Then play, then a nap. Um, then you get yourself to lunch and you repeat. Um, let's, let's go back to 7 o'clock wake up and going out to potty. Um, the first couple nights, your puppy is likely not to sleep all the way to, to 7 a.m. We typically take our puppies out at 11 p.m. for the last time to go to bed and then it's time for the crate and then we like them to sleep till seven and when we've kept puppies past eight weeks they have shown that they are able to um, to hold it that long but initially when they're in a brand new house and all the smells around them are brand new they just might have some excitement built up in their system and you might hear them wake up at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and if you're lucky you might get all the way to 6 a.m. the first night. I've had families tell me that that's worked. But whenever your puppy wakes up, you're going to need to take them out to go to the bathroom, whether you use the alfalfa or you go outside, that's up to you. But take carry your puppy in the puppy hold when you do that because if you're carrying a puppy, the puppy's not going to pee on you. Typically they only pee when they start walking. And they have a natural instinct to not go to the bathroom in their crate. So hopefully, you know, the dog has held it all night. He's started to whine and let you know that um, he needs to go. So pick him up, carry him outside in the puppy hold, set him down to go to the bathroom. You can give him a treat. If not, if it's too early in the morning, you can't manage all that. Don't worry about it. He went to the bathroom. He feels better. Once you get to around 7, 7.30 a.m., it's time for breakfast. Um, I'm sending you home with a bunch of food. It should be about enough for a week. You can just set it in a little bowl for him. You don't need to measure it. Let him have access to that food for 20 or 30 minutes. So you can start by feeding him just in his exercise pen and he can get accustomed to that. Or you can just let him run around and eat. I, I do recommend feeding him the exercise pen initially. It'll just get him, just get him used to the exercise pen and um, and the fact that he needs to eat. <laughs> so 20, 30 minutes, let him eat. Um, don't fuss over how much he eats. Um, let him eat as much as he can in that time frame. He's not gonna overeat at this age. Um, again, the first two days, if you're seeing that he's not eating a lot, don't worry about it because he's probably just nervous and his appetite will pick up later. Um, of course, always have fresh water available. After the puppy's eaten and it's been about 20 minutes, they definitely need to go to the bathroom. So you can begin forming that routine of we go outside, we walk around, we get the bowels moving, the bladder releases, and you get a treat, and you can choose your potty word like go potty, go potty, that's what we say, and um, you know it's natural for them to go outside. Now you might want to take some of the alfalfa we've given you, and you can take a handful or two and take it outside to where you want your puppy to go to the bathroom, because they definitely have a strong association with going to the bathroom on the alfalfa. So. There you go. Then you're going to have playtime with your puppy. And then after, like the morning, they're going to have a good amount of energy. They could play for a solid 45 minutes to an hour. Then your puppy will start to slow down. Um, you'll start to just see them stop, maybe lay down on your, on your floor, kind of curl up a little bit. That's a great time to just pick your puppy up, hold them, get them used to being held while they're sleepy. Okay, and you can kind of wait till the puppy is almost all the way asleep, just really relax, and then you can place your puppy in the crate. So, do you need to always have your puppy sleep in a crate? No, you don't, but your puppy from us is used to sleeping in an open pen and a plastic crate and a wire crate. They've slept in all of it, and they willingly go in. So, I would look for to try to have either your morning or afternoon nap be in a crate. So you can put the puppy in, 
totally fine to give him, you know, something that he's used to. Give him the blanket that we sent, sent you home with. Um, Kong, I would wait a little bit on this because any extra food is just gonna, you know, move, move their bowels more often and maybe kind of hurt the potty training efforts. So put him in the air, he's already sleepy. Close the crate, you can go ahead and close it all the way, okay? Now this is kind of optional closing it all the way. If you're gonna close it all the way, that's fine. But I would like you to be near, like in earshot of the puppy. So when um, when he wakes up and needs to go to the bathroom, which is gonna be anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half later, you don't want him whining and scratching and feeling desperate. Like I really, really, really need to go out and I'm stressed because we don't, you don't wanna have a, a negative association with the crate. So if you're in earshot and he wakes up, great. Just open the door, pull him out, carry him outside in the puppy hold, have him go to the bathroom. Um, another option though is you don't have to close the crate all the way if you have him in an exercise pen. And if that exercise pen is um, you know, completely safe and it has the alfalfa in it, if that's the route you want to take with potty training. So you can leave it like this and then whenever your puppy wakes up, he'll come out and he should step out of here and then use the alfalfa because that is what he's been doing in our house. Okay, so nap time like that is gonna be two to three to four times a day. Um, if you wanna have some naps, just be on your lap. I think that is totally fine. Um, but look for at least one nap in a crate every day because you're probably gonna want your puppy to sleep in a crate at night, so. Okay, um, so we kind of repeating repeating this routine for the afternoon and the evening as well. And where we have playtime stuff or activity time stuff, that's where you um, you can go for a car ride um, since we're social distancing. Um, you know, you could have your own pretend socializing at home where you dress up, you put on masks, you put on Halloween costumes, funny hats, you talk in deep voices, you talk in high voices, you wear high heels. You know, you bend over like you have a hunched back, you have a cane, crutches, like anything like that is good for the puppy to experience. Um, if you go for car rides, um, you know, you can't, we can't go out and go into a lot of stores, although you could go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, and that would be a good experience for the puppy. Um, but just opening the car window and let the puppy look out in, in a parking lot or at a gas station and just smell what's there, that, those, those are good ideas. Um, going for car rides is, is really important during this these next four weeks as um, as um, just a, as a big open window in his development. So getting used to the car getting used to car rides is important at this time. Okay, I've got lunch somewhere around twelve. I've got dinner sometime around six. If your family does not operate on these exact times, go ahead and scratch those out and make your own times. Um, the, the key is just you got three meals a day and that's what he's going to eat up until he's about six months old. And again, for each meal, you're just letting him have the food in his exercise pen or near you. He's got access to it for about half an hour and then make sure you're taking him out to go potty about 20 minutes later. During these play times, he's going to need to go potty a lot. So if you've got him, let's say you've got him in your living room and he's playing and you have a little tray of alfalfa there, he will probably go potty in that alfalfa. And that, some people want that because that keeps their rug clean or that keeps them from having to clean up the floor. Um, then you can continue to move that alfalfa tray closer to the door that he's gonna go out of. That can help a lot. You can do that over the course of a, a couple weeks. Um, or if you're just gonna watch really closely, you just watch for the puppy to sniff, 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 sniff. That's about how long it takes, sniff, 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 spin, and then they'll plop into a squat and you know it's coming. <laughs> so um, you'll have to carry him outside. Okay, so I think I talked about that. Now, right here we said withhold water about two hours before the puppy goes to bed. Um, there's some debate on that. Like, you obviously don't want your puppy to, <laughs> to be thirsty, truly thirsty. But you also don't want him to drink a ton because then he'll wake up in the middle of the night and need to go. So just be cautious about how much water he's drinking before he goes to bed. Okay, a couple other things. When he goes to bed at night, <laughs> the first two nights, we're sending you home with this Adaptal spray. There's about 12 or to 14 squirts in here. 
So if you'll just squirt the inside of your crate with about six squirts um, before it's bedtime, or right before bedtime, it does have a really strong smell. Um, so you could spray your six squirts, then you could take puppy outside to go to the bathroom, and then once puppy comes back in, he might be ready to go to bed, you know, maybe after some <laughs> lullabies or nighttime evening cuddles, okay? Um, so this is just a natural pheromone. Uh, well, it's a synthetic pheromone that um, mimics the same pheromone that mom releases when she's nursing the puppies. Okay, we're sending you home with some greenies. I would not give these the first couple nights. I would just wait. Um, but you, and this is designed for their size. You can give them the whole thing. Or if you want, you can just break them up and you can put that in their crate with them at night. And that's, an, this is a yummy thing that they tend to like a lot. So they'll associate the crate with, with that as being another good thing. Same with treats. And I'm sending you home with these little Purina Moist and Meaty stick treats. During the daytime, if you were, you know, if you want to just throw a few treats in there, your puppy will start to make a habit of checking the crate for some treats. And that's good because the more he goes in and feels comfortable about that, the more he'll like the crate. So I'm wondering if I covered everything here. Um, something, another thing we've noticed with raising young puppies is they can feel distressed being away from you. If you want to keep this crate near you, near your bed, that can definitely help. Um, we've even heard of people sleeping with this crate with the puppy in it in their bed and it just keeps the puppy just feeling a little happier, um, more content, and then you can gradually move the crate away. So I personally think you're looking at being able to get an eight hour a night sleep by the time the puppy's nine weeks old, because that's our experience. And then, um, and then gradually being able to stretch that out and the puppy being content in here um, for a long stretch, really long stretch away from you, like if you don't want the puppy in your room, um, at least by the third month. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I just want to talk quickly about these these things here. These are phenomenal little keep them busy, keep them occupied toys. This is the wobbler. It's not really called the wobbler. It's just what we call it here. But what you're going to do is you can fill it with a mix of their regular food and you can make them actually just work for an entire meal. Let's say you know that you're gonna be away, need to be away from the puppy for a few hours, or you would like the puppy to just be more relaxed and kind of worn out for maybe the afternoon. This will wear him out very well. So you just open the door like, like this, or how, when you're first starting, open it all the way so the puppy can figure out how this works. But as they knock it and they paw it back and forth, their food will come out. Um, you can also mix a few treats in there too. That'll keep them extra motivated for it. But you could set this in their exercise pen and they would wobble this and wobble this until their whole meal or until they're full or until they crash. So that is a great, a great toy right here. Kind of the same with the Kong. Um, we typically fill it with peanut butter, but your puppies are so small and their bellies could get upset by that much peanut butter. So you can do little bits of, um, cooked carrots or partially, they can be partially cooked, that's fine for the young puppies. Um, little bits of turkey, chicken, those are our favorites. A little bit of peanut butter, and then just the puppy will just work on this for a long time. So this is another great thing for the exercise pen and for um, you're getting some of that extra energy out. <laughs>